Are we back to Fernando Sosa? Well, you know, all I'm saying is that that a lot of these stories are apocryphal. Uh, A lot of them are are dubious. uh, And I never believe anything I I hear. Um, If the the young fella is genuinely, uh, his dad was very sick and did lose his his leg, uh, which incidentally there were no reports about in the Spanish papers. Interesting. Um, pardon? Interesting. Interesting. But, um, you know, the thing about it is he's, he's a much more difficult fighter. You're saying he hasn't guy. a leg to stand on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. I, I, I'm only joking. I, I know you are. As long as you guys can take that as a, as a, as a joke. From Jerry, not me. You know, I, I, he's very talented. And I'm telling you, you haven't seen what this kid can do. Um, Juan, he, as soon as he hit him, his, he started to shake him. His hands kept up. Yeah. So he was trying to pick shots out to break him down to the body and then hit him with single shots. As soon as he hits him with one shot, you see what happened. He's extremely heavy handed. He sparred with um, Gary Buckland, who knocked out the British super featherweight champion Gary Sykes. And he, was doing well. yeah. he sparred with the world light welterweight champion Gavin Rees and doing brilliantly well. He's getting an amazing experience. We are like vagrants, we travel all over the country. We were spending a lot of time in Aldershot because Gary doesn't like to leave his family. So he would come over and, and spar every other day in Aldershot. That was a halfway point. So we trained in there and it was it was fantastic. Then we went to the Pinewood Star Gym and we travelled to London and we travelled to Crawley. So he's just getting there. You know, I think people are beginning to get it about this kid. He can really fight and he can really do special things. And, you know, he's, he's not the finished article. He has to mutate and get better. And... Um, but I really believe he can beat any of the guys out there. Did you see anything tonight that maybe surprised you slightly? Or have you seen it all already from him? I, 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 mean, I, I, I have seen marvellous things in the gym. And people, fighters don't always convert it from the gym to the ring. And, you know, I see things and I get excited and I say things and people say, oh, he's, you know, Wigan's talking to his backside, you know, saying he's the best prospect that, that you know, Irish fighter I've seen in 30 years. And maybe I should quantify that. By, uh, he's the best kid I've seen in that weight division in 30 years, and I think he's got he's got incredible ability. He can fight off the back foot as you saw tonight. He can also go forward. We've got little things to little incremental improvements to make as he as he gets up to further up the ranking. Scott Quake was there tonight. He says he's interested in the fight. He fights Booth uh, for the European title, uh, for the British title apparently in October. Um, we're very happy to fight any of these guys. We offered the fight to Monroe to circumvent any problems that there might be and we would then have fought Martinez as the winner um, uh, and they didn't want uh, they said Martinez said no we're not willing we asked him to vacate to allow us to fight Monroe but he, he wouldn't do it so um, anyway so and I, you know we we're just looking forward to the next one I think what he's shown is he's, he sold I think 25,000 pounds worth of tickets um, we really want to, we desperately want uh, Paul McCluskey to win tonight because we believe it's a new wave of interest in, 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 in Irish boxing back in Belfast. And we've got Martin Lindsay, is just, he's, uh, you know, he's still there or thereabouts, and, and we've got kids coming through. And Eamon O'Kane looked really great tonight, he's got little improvements to make himself. So it's all happening, it's all getting better, and we want to be at, uh, we were, we want to be at the head of all of this and push it forward. Or you say uh, that Carl's not the finished article, is, no, that maybe, is that maybe a blessing in disguise so that he no, no, gets a bit more yeah. time yeah. and he can get to the and Definitely, I, th- I think what, what, we've got, what we've got to realise is, uh, you know, if, for example, you know, some Dave Paris turned to me and said he's a good kid, but you know, when he gets up the ranks, he better keep his hands up. But I think he's got that sort of uh, natural intelligence that when he's in with a guy that can hit, you suddenly think, wow, his damn hands are a bit higher. What, but what? he's really, really good, and he, he's he's great counter punching. Going back, he's got to improve little bits going forward. Do you think uh, that Kiko would have suffered a similar fate tonight? No, I don't think I don't think he would have he would have stopped Kiko that early in the fight. 
what we were convinced that he would have been. And I, I don't want to sound and say things yeah. that I regret later. And I, I, I'm not bumptious. I just know that he has the capabilities of beating Martinez, and we wouldn't have taken the fight. And um, if you spent seven weeks with him, like I did, every single day, twice a day, uh, and saw the way he sparred his sparring partners and handled his sparring partners, guys that were he was given a stone weight to, you know, really quality fighters he was given a, a stone weight to, and punching holes and so on. He's, he's, he's a tremendous guy. When's, it, I, when's he likely to be out again? I'd like him to get out again Christmas. soon. I'd like him to get out oh, definitely before Christmas. You see, the problem nowadays, Jerry, and you remember, and even you do too, and some of the younger ones don't. Years ago, where shows were profitable, you could put kids out every month, and sometimes even twice a month. I looked at my record and saw that it was out twice in one month. If you got a fight over early, you'd go to another promoter and get the shows on. The Sean O'Grady like, fought 26 times in yeah. his first year. Yeah, I just really hear this. Henry Armstrong, homicide Hank, yeah. defended his welterweight title four times in 1931. In, in one, one month. In one October, yeah. In one month. Yeah. So, you know, what I'm saying is, you know, Hatton was lucky if he, if he fought three times a year. Things have changed and they're not going back because at the moment the economy is so difficult. It's very, very difficult with, with the improvements in, in medical regulations, which I, which I sort of spearheaded with the Professional mm -hmm. Boxers Association. What that means is that MRI scans, um, you know, annual MRI, annual MRI scans and all of the other stuff, uh, paramedics ringside, uh, you know, all of the, the, the medical regulations have made small hall shows nigh on impossible to make profit. Yeah. So there are now people can, you know, for example, Satanta were great to me and we but we lost 5,000 on the first show, we put 85% full on the second show, we lost 7,000. So it's just, it's just difficult. Um, <laughs> However, um, you know that that's just the nature of the game, and, and so therefore, what happens is we we pair things down to having a television show, and we get uh, seven or eight or nine or ten big fights mm. on a television show, and that's the only way that fighters can get out and keep busy. So what do you do? The, so the, the alternative to, to that is to do extensive amounts of sparring, quality sparring, yeah, yeah. and have long camps. And, and if you've got a kid that's got the potential that Frampton's got, you spend a long, long time getting them ready. That means money, that means investment, course, yeah. and yeah. I have spent a lot of money on it. But, uh, and it's a labour of me, <laughs> I haven't done a penny yet, and I don't care, because I want to make this kid a world champion. And I want to make him the best fighter he can be. And I have to keep spending time with him and mentoring him, and my son is doing a great job, Jerry Story is doing a marvellous job, and we've got a great little, night, a tight little team, and uh, he will get better. And, you know, when I look into his eyes and he's tired and they're blowing in the head around, I'm saying, you are a world-class kid. This next round's going to be easy because guess what? He's blowing out his arse as well. Yeah. He realises that, he understands that, he believes me. So, um, you know, he's getting better all the time. He's just a wonderful young man. He's, you know, a Protestant, but I was a Catholic. And all this stuff is cliched and trite and, and worn out. But he's very, very special. He's a very special individual. And I'm telling you, when the fans get to know him, they really like the way they got to know me, they will, they will be out in hundreds of thousands. He sold 25,000 pounds worth of tickets for this show. And if it had been Martinez, he probably should, would have sold more like 50,000 pounds. Um, and those big fights are ahead. What this gives us is a bit of currency and, and uh, uh, affords us the opportunity to for matching when it comes to a bidding situation against Hatton or Warren or anybody else that they will say, we'll throw another hundred down in, in, yeah. in the pot if it means we, getting we, the we'll fight stick back. With him. Because, no, but to get him back here. And for us and for you guys, that's what it's all about. And I'm trying to serve in you guys too. And that's why I said to the guy out there, you know, bollocks. They're coming back because they've been traveling with us. You travel the road with me. Yeah. I would never have been successful without Jerry Callum and Tom Crane and Martin Brandy and all of the other guys and Jack McDonald. The night and against George Jim McDonald in, in, in his dressing room, in the hotel room afterwards, yeah. right? Do you remember before you were going out to announce yeah. your retirement? Yeah. You kind of announced it privately in yeah. the room. And he walks across to me and says, I just put you out of business, didn't I? <laughs> uh, no, no, but, but the point is, you're back in business with this kid. You're back in business with this kid. Anyway, in, in, ter in, ter in terms of next out.